Good morning, everyone. I'm Christine Del Rosario, partner and leader of PwC's Pan-Asian Community Inclusion Network. I'm joined today by Tim Ryan, PwC's chair and senior partner. Hello, Christine, and it is great to be with you, and I want to thank you for being here, folks. I'm Tim Ryan. I'm PwC's chair and senior partner. I also have the privilege of being the co-founder of CEO Action for Diversity and Inclusion and the founder of CEO Action for Racial Equity. I do want to thank John Wang and the Asian American Business Development Center for having us here today. It is an honor and a privilege. And I also want to thank the fellow ERG members to be here as well. I'm looking forward to it. Tim, in the post-pandemic world of work, listening to the voice of employees is more important than ever. And the role of employee resource groups has never been more pivotal. In your perspective, could you talk about the value and impact ERGs have made at PWC? Yeah, thanks, Christine. And you know this firsthand, but the power of our ERGs has been incredible at PwC for really helping to drive our inclusion strategy forward and help our people realize their full potential. We have grown from 15,000 to 20,000 people in our ERG groups over the last year. That's almost a third of our employees. We have a significant number of those people are our majority and people weighing in and getting involved. It has been incredibly important for us not only to help inspire our people, know they're being heard, understand their concerns, but in giving advice to senior leadership. And one of the best stories that we have of that is that when we were going through the Israeli-Palestine conflict a little over a year ago, we heard from our people that we did not have a faith-based ERG. And as a result of that feedback, it, it gave me and my team advice and the confidence that we should form one of those groups. And we're already at 1,300 people in that group for our interfaith ERG group, which covers everything from Christian to Jewish to Hindu to Muslim uh, representatives and the majority to understand the challenges they face in realizing their full opportunity. So it's been an incredibly powerful tool for us to really make sure we get better as an organization. And I know you as the leader of our Pan-Asian ERG group, um, you've seen that firsthand. So as a leader, are there any shifts or developments related to ERGs that you've noticed in the last few years? And maybe even more, looking ahead, what focus areas do you think ERG leaders should zero in on to have the most impact? Tim, for me, I feel like there are a couple of things that have shifted. One, in terms of allyship, we've seen that that has grown tremendously over the, the recent years. And I think that is great for our people to be able to see that. And we've seen sponsorship at both um, the majority and our diverse um, leaders. And I think that's just been really helpful. The second thing I'd say is... Um, Having the ERGs help amplify the voice of our staff, as you know, many a times um, people get talked about when they're not in the room. So having the ERGs um, be an element where people could um, have the platform to engage, show their leadership skills, show their potential. I think that's actually one, one that we found very useful. Yeah, Christine, thank you. Just to add on to that, your point around sponsorship is hugely important and, and having not just members of the ERG group, but but met the majority in that room so they can understand the issues, get to know the people, see their leadership is incredibly important. So thank you. You're welcome. Tim, can you talk a little bit about your take on the power of ERGs as a tool for driving corporate response to complex issues? I mean, we've seen things on racial hate, social economic inequalities. What should ERG leaders keep in mind as they weigh in on taking a stance? I, I think, Christine, thank you for that. And as, as our world has become more complicated and also one that unfortunately has more and more issues, we see a major opportunity for ERG leaders to sit down with senior leaders like myself and educate us and keep you in touch. The, the beauty of being an ERG leader is you're, you are closer to what's on the minds of our people. You're closer to what, what their needs are, how we can be responsive, how we can create a safe work environment, what they need to hear from us. So I think there's a massive opportunity for ERG leaders, and I, I know you do this for me and our team, is is helping us to be aware. Like we can't be everywhere. As you know, at PwC, we have eleven ERG groups. We have we have almost a third of our entire employee population, sixty five thousand, that are part of it. I count on our ERG leaders to help me know what is important, so then I can weigh the best need with my team to weigh in on the best way to help them. I think both leaders like myself and leaders like yourself of ERG, ERG groups have a massive opportunity and I would say even responsibility to have that dialogue around how do we best meet the needs by our voice, by our written word, uh, by our social media and the like. So Christine, how can senior leaders like, like myself or other senior leaders in the audience, how can we best support ERGs 
to position them and leaders like you for the maximum support and impact. So Tim, what we've heard from our people time and time again is the fact that the time they spend with senior leaders is very valuable to them. And the critical um, component for us is how we do that at scale. So if there are only a handful of people doing it, it doesn't work. I think what's most important for us is to be able to create the structure so we can um, have these experiences be felt by our people both um, in smaller scale and larger scale, similar experiences across different offices, but having many leaders actually within each organization support those initiatives. And that way you'll be able to see the ripple effect across um, the organization. Yeah, Christine, that's a really great point. Um, a, a, an engaged senior leader with empowered ERGs can really help an organization take its game to the next level. So thank you for that. So Tim, as you mentioned, um, ERGs cultivate high trust relationships between their members and their allies. PwC recently created um, the Trust Leadership Institute, and that gathers senior executives to discuss and navigate the most complex trust-related issues. They also identify opportunities and to help us take action as leaders and as organizations. I think TLI could be a great additional resource to ERG leaders. Could you talk a little bit about the success you've seen from TLI and how leaders can get involved if they're interested? Yeah, sure, Christine. I'm, as you know, I'm passionate about this, but I maybe take the audience back a little bit. Two years ago, PwC announced its new global strategy called the New Equation, and it was focused on helping companies and organizations drive more trust in their organizations as we saw a more divided world, everything from natural resources to financial resources to racial inequities. And we also saw the need to drive better outcomes and, and a lot of effort, but to drive better outcomes. As part of launching that new global strategy, we, we launched a Trust Leadership Institute. And our commitment was to have over 10,000 C-suite type executives go through that of which half will be diverse. We're now two years into that. And the reason we launched that is none of us have all the answers. Like None of us do. And what we owe each other is investment of time, investment of our, our minds and our hearts to learn new ways, and learn new ways of dealing with challenges, new ways to inspire. And so the Trust Leadership Institute is a tremendous resource for ERG leaders, among others. It's a tremendous resource to CEOs, board members, operating executives, and ERG leaders to understand how do you deal with these complicated problems. And ultimately what we're all trying to do is inspire us to realize our full and maximum potential. So the TLI has a number of different ways people can get engaged. We have a four day immersive academy that people can apply to and get involved with and they can reach out to people like me and you and other PwC leaders. We also have one hour on demand virtual, virtual TLI experiences on very topical areas um, such as what ERG leaders work with. We also have a Trust in Action website, webcast series that people can get involved in as well. And then we also have community support and connection. It is all meant to help all of us be more trusted leaders because we believe if we are more trusted leaders, we will be able to help our people, we'll be able to help our customers and our clients and our communities do better. And with so many challenges the world is throwing at us, we believe by coming together, we can all raise our game around being trusted. And again, as ERG leaders, we need our people that we're leading know, uh, to know that we they can trust us to do what's right by them. So I think it's a great question, and it's a great invitation for many people who are listening to this to have the opportunity to engage in our Trust Leadership Institute. We welcome that. And I've personally actually hosted my clients at the TLI, and I have had great feedback. So Christine, from the work that you've done with PwC's Pan-Asian Community Inclusion Network, do you have any advice or best practices you want to share with ERG leaders that, given the great success you've seen leading our group? In our experience, what I found is um, some helpful things. One, create um, a, a structure that actually will enable you to drive some initiatives nationally and also at a local level so the offices could tailor them and make sure the experience is fit for those individuals at the, the different offices. But at least you have you try to drive some consistency. 